What happens when we have inaction? And how does that affect us? Well, that is exactly what our next speaker is here to talk. Why inaction on Gen I poses the greatest risk of all. Taking the stage to share with us on this topic, the CEO of Deloitte Canada. Would you please welcome Anthony Vale to join us here. Come on out here, Anthony. Thank you. You made it right through it's the lights. Good to see you again. How are you, my friend? I'm very well. So very glad you're here. Thank Enjoy. You. Bonjour. Good day. My name's Anthony Veal, or AV, as they call me. Uh, my friends at Deloitte call me. And I have the privilege of serving Deloitte Canada and Chile, don't ask why Chile, as the Chief Executive Officer. Today, I want to talk to you all about change. It's impossible to discuss the potential and benefits of exponential technologies like AI without first accepting that we cannot get access to these benefits or deliver on that potential without feeling and understanding how humans change, adapt to change, embrace change. I believe it's an imperative that we as leaders, you all in the room, embrace new technologies like generative AI quickly and responsibly in the, in the work that you do. But we also need some guardrails. Guardrails and guidance, or the risk to society could be astronomical. It's on all of us, all of us in the room, here to prepare for the inevitable and shape a better future right now through action. Why the rush? Well, history helps us here. Let me take you back, for those of you old enough, back to 1995, and that was the era of the internet and applications like Netscape, one of the first tools that we used to surf the web. Academics have been toying with the internet since the 60s, but it wasn't until Netscape that the general public, you and me, had access to the internet, opening our eyes to the potential of the digital world. If you cast your way back to 1995, to the newspapers, everyone predicted bold and unprecedented change, exactly the same claims that we see today. The wild claims back in 1995 were soon we would be able to have video chat with our friends and families overseas. We were able to do education online and stream thousands and thousands of movies from the comfort of our own home. Now, we all know that these articles were not wrong, but a problem arose back then because these changes didn't immediately eventuate, didn't materialize to match the power of our imagination and our patience. And a couple of years later, you may recall, we had the dot-com boom quickly followed by the dot-com crash. And by the turn of the century, many digital companies that rode this wave of optimism in the stock market like Webvan, Global Crossing, Pets.com, went out of business. And when these companies went out of business, our optimism went down about the potential of this digital world. This is what we call, and you would know today, as the hype cycle. And the period that follows the peak hype is the trough of disillusionment. This is when the full potential of a new technology doesn't immediately meet our wildest needs. And when that happens, we tend to dismiss it or ignore it and move on to the next thing. Today, I believe technologies like generative AI are at the peak, and I believe that we're about to go through the trough of disillusionment. But my appeal to you all today is to not get distracted by this, or worse, be lulled into a sense of inaction. Because what happened next in future and with the internet is telling. After the hype passed, it opened up a space for all of us to test, to learn, to experiment. And for those of, that, of us that persisted, who wasted no time rolling up their sleeves, the rewards proved to be huge, historic even. For companies like Amazon that lost 80% of their value through the dot-com crash, and then came Google in the mid-2000s, changing the game for everybody. Today, ChatGBT is our Netscape, I believe, our canary in the coal mine. We don't know yet what our Google moment will look like, but we know it's coming. 
and I believe it's coming faster than we think. Gen AI is moving at a pace more rapidly than we've ever seen before. And I believe this trough of disillusionment will be short. I'm thinking weeks and months, not years. And the sheer scope of generative AI means that eventually every company, all the companies that you represent, will become a Gen AI company. And some will be impacted, some of you will be impacted harder and sooner than many, but no one in this room will be immune. And in times of rapid technological change, leaders step forward. They commit to a position and then they act. Not just to survive, but to thrive and take advantage of the new situation. And don't just take it from me. At Deloitte, we expect generative AI to become a $500 billion global market in the next four years. And looking down the line, others suggest that generative AI could add $4.5 trillion to the global GDP. That's the equivalent of the German economy today. And even if these estimates are only half right, these numbers are still huge, and I'm sure you agree. And further consider what we've seen before with other technologies. Look at iPhone. It took just four years to hit a billion dollars through the App Store in one quarter. And in Q1 this year, it was $33 billion. Or YouTube. It went within six months from 30,000 views to 2 million views. And in 12 months, Google acquired it for $1.6 billion. Of course, today we have ChatGBT. We took just two months to hit 100 million monthly users, making it the fastest growing application, consumer application ever. And on Monday, we learned that ChatGBT could speak. This is just an example of the exponential technologies we're going to continue to see. And the next iteration of Gen AI tools will eclipse all of the technologies of the past in both scale and speed. But what about the risks? Other speakers at this conference have been speaking about the risk. And it's an issue that we at Deloitte wanted to get a better understanding of. So earlier this year, we made it a priority to uh, go in get some in, uh, background and some feedback on the state of artificial intelligence in Canada and how companies are feeling about this positioning. And just yesterday, we released our first national AI ecosystem report. We surveyed hundreds of companies and organizations across Canada, and 86% reported that they had concerns regarding the ethical risks of AI. Now, these concerns are understandable and align with some of those of Geoffrey Hinton, some would say the godfather of AI, who warns of real material risks and the path that society is on with AI. Risks such as model regression, hallucinations, and I'm sure you've heard all about that, or other issues such as privacy, biases, and confidentiality. Make no mistake, these risks are real. But so are the risks of doing nothing. And as business leaders here in this room, we have, I believe, an obligation to build a foundation for an ethical and responsible Gen AI that can shape a better future for all. And in the absence of regulation, we must lead responsibly to use Gen AI thoughtfully in line with our core values and the values of our communities in which we live. And second, recognizing that the regulators are always going to struggle to keep up with the pace of technological change, we've got to work with these regulators to fast track the benchmarks and the uh, boundaries for everyone else to follow. Because if we do this right, the benefits will be huge for all of us. Leading the ethical rollout of AI also means creating an approach that's fundamentally inclusive. Our research found that some of the greatest concerns among more than half of our respondents was the potential for bias or low-quality results. Now, I don't worry too much about low-quality results in the sense that we continue to improve results and we've proven time and time again AIs outperform humans. But I am worried about the biases. These are very probable and they worry me a lot. 
Gen AI tools, AI tools developed naively or in a vacuum will hardwire racial, gender, and other biases into the operation, which I think has the potential to further divide us as a society. Now, this is simply not acceptable. And we have to make sure that this doesn't happen. We also know the potential for Gen AI to replace human jobs is real and a concern for many. But interestingly, our research found that only a quarter, one in four, of respondents were worried about losing their jobs. This tells us that organisations see Gen AI as a productivity tool and not a replacement for people. Now, I'm an optimist. I am confident that Gen AI, like all technologies of the past, will actually create jobs in excess of those that are dis displaced. It's happened before and it'll happen again, whether it was the steam engines, the telegraphs, or the internet. All of these advancements created jobs. Now, some folks need to be retrained, for sure. But for those who do get retrained, the opportunities will be plentiful. And changing the way in which we work will also help solve a bigger problem for Canada, and that's productivity. Productivity rates around the world have been falling for decades, years. And Canada's rate has been slipping faster than everybody else's. 20 years ago, we were in the top third of the most productive nations in the world. But today, we're in the bottom third. And there's no evidence that we are going to arrest that decline. And this has real consequences for Canadians. An economy that's less competitive produces less income, and that's not a good thing. And this is something, as business leaders, we all need to get in front of. And that's why I'm excited about AI, and in particular, generative AI, because this is our latest opportunity to arrest this productivity decline. But this will only happen when we, you, Canadian businesses, step forward with courage and harness Gen AI's full potential responsibly. The good news for us is Canada is the best in class for AI talent, leading all G7 countries for growth rate and AI talent concentration. Yesterday, Minister Champagne and Mayor Plant both described Canada as a global leader for AI, and they're right. We found that one in 10 of the world's most elite AI researchers call Canada home. And as leaders, it's on us to hire and empower these AI experts into strategic roles, because their voices are going to be essential to a responsible, ethical AI landscape. No matter where you work, your industry or role, I urge you to act now and help us move forward responsibly. It bears repeating. Sooner or later, every company will be a Gen AI company. One final thought. The possibilities of Gen AI need to be tempered by leaders like you with core values and a shared vision to make it better for everybody. This is not a free-for-all. It's a time to ask the big questions about the kind of world that we want to build together, a world we want to repair together. And at Deloitte, We've helped and inspired others for 180 years, dating back to the first Industrial Revolution and those very first audits of the British railway industry. As AI leads us into the fourth Industrial Revolution, our purpose remains steadfast and at the forefront of our words and our actions. I call on all of you to look inward. Never forget the legacy of those who come before you and the promise of the purpose that guided you to this point today. When we do this collectively, we can not only be part of an ethical, responsible, uh, and prosperous era for Canada and Canadians, we can also right the wrongs of the past and accelerate a better future for all. Thank you. Merci.